In a recent video, Everybody's CSS hero Kevin Powell did a deep dive into CSS-only scroll-based animations. Now, what's great about this solution is it doesn't require any JavaScript, which I'd really prefer to not add to my website if I don't have to. Of course, in Kevin's video, he did a deep dive into how all this works and shows you all kinds of advanced configuration options. But being the simple man that I am, I really wanted to just come up with an easy way to add this fade in and up effect anytime I needed it on my website. So I took what I learned from Kevin, modified the code slightly, and came up with this simple effect that ends up achieving exactly what I was after. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I set this all up and explain all the code to you, including a quick introduction to keyframe animations. If these kind of subtle animations are something you'd like to be able to quickly and easily add to your website, then stick around and let's get started. Okay, to give us something to work with, I went ahead and grabbed some different sections from the pattern library on generateblocks.com, and I thought this layout gave us a good opportunity to grab all of these images and make them part of our animation. So essentially what I'd like to do is have these images animate in as they come into our viewport. So here on the back end, all we're gonna to need to do is add a class to these images or these containers, and then we'll jump into the customizer and start writing all of our CSS to make all these animations actually happen. So I'll go ahead and click on this first box here, and I need to give it a class. I'm gonna go ahead and call it OWD Fade In. Now you can call this whatever you want. I like to typically name it things that I'll be able to easily remember so that I can reuse this class on other elements, but it is important that we go ahead and copy this to our clipboard because we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we're using the exact same class with no typos as we add this to other elements and as we write our CSS. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that to my clipboard. We'll scroll down and grab this next image, give it a class, and this final one here and give it a class. Now we can go ahead and hit update and we can go view our page on the front end. Now, of course, we haven't written any of the animation CSS yet, so nothing's happening, but we can go ahead and jump into the customizer and do that next. Here in the customizer, I'll go ahead and click additional CSS and we can start writing the CSS for this animation. So let's go ahead and scroll down here so we can see this image in our viewport and we'll start writing our CSS over here on the left. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type a period and then I'm gonna paste in that OWD fade in class that we gave all those images. Next, we'll just open and close our curly bracket and we'll start writing our first declaration. Here, we're gonna do animation and we need to give our animation a name. Now you can call your animation whatever you'd like. Often, if I'm using some kind of utility class, which we are here to add this animation to objects, then I'll go ahead and name my animation the same thing I'm naming my class, but it's not a requirement that you do so. But for now, we'll just go ahead and call this OWD fade in. Now after that, we'll type a space and we'll write linear. That's the timing function of this animation. And then we'll write forwards. That just makes sure that this animation doesn't reset after it completes. Then we can go ahead and do our semicolon and press enter to write our next line. Here we'll do animation hyphen timeline. And after a colon, we're gonna write view with an open and close parentheses. Again, we'll do our semicolon to finish that line. And we have one more line here, which is animation hyphen range. And we're gonna type in the word entry with our semicolon. Now this is all we need to do to set up the CSS for this. But next we need to actually write the animation that's gonna make these images do something. So here under this declaration, I'm gonna give us a couple more returns and we're gonna write what is called a keyframe animation. Now, if you haven't used keyframe animations before, what we're gonna to do today is actually pretty simple. You can get really complex with these things, but consider this a little introduction to keyframe animations. So what we'll do is type the at symbol and then we'll write the word keyframes. Next, we need a space and we need to tell it which animation we're gonna be writing. So in this case, we named our animation OWD fade in. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that, copy it, and paste it in here to our keyframe declaration. So now essentially what we're saying is, hey, we're gonna write a keyframe animation for this animation. After that, we can do a space and open and close our curly brackets. Now we're gonna write our animation inside these curly brackets. I'm gonna give myself a couple extra returns just to make it easier to see here on this video, but that's in no way a requirement of writing a keyframe animation. So essentially what we wanna do with our animation is take it from one state and move it to another state. So it's really easy to do that by just writing the keyword from and open and close our curly brackets. And then outside of that, we'll write to and open and close our curly brackets. All we'll need to do now is tell it 
what state we want it to be in when it starts, and how we want it to finish. So for this, what I'm actually going to do is do a transform translate y, which is translating the vertical axis, and we'll open and close parentheses. And in here, I'm going to say 400 pixels. Now you can see, as soon as I did that, the image down here actually jumped out of the screen. That's because we're already seeing the effects of this animation take place. Now what we want to do is start with this 400 pixels and we want to end up moving it right into position. So what we're going to do is another transform, translate Y, and now we're going to do zero pixels, which will put it back to where it belongs. With these in place, we can actually test out our animation now and we can see those images are moving up as they come into our viewport, which is exactly what we were after. Now for me, I think we could actually take this one step further and work on the opacity of these images and have them actually fade in. But to do that, we're gonna to have to make our keyframe animation just a little bit more complex. Instead of doing the from and to, we're gonna change these to different percentage stops. So here I'm gonna say we're gonna start at 0% and instead of two, we're gonna do 100%. What this does is allow us to write some declarations in between these two percentages. For instance, I'm not gonna want the opacity to start changing until we get to 50%. So here I can write 50% and open and close our curly brackets. Now what we wanna do is say here at 0%, we want the opacity to be zero. So we'll write opacity colon zero semicolon. Here at 50%, we want that same opacity. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste that into our 50%. And then here at 100%, I'll go ahead and paste that in, but I wanna change it to a one, which is gonna be completely opaque. So with this in place, what we're doing is we're animating this transform, which is the vertical movement. It's gonna start at 400 pixels down at 0%, and it's gonna smoothly animate to zero, right where it belongs, once we get to 100%. However, the opacity is not going to start changing until we get to the 50% mark, and then it's going to go from 0 to 100%, just from 50 to 100%. So if we scroll up here and we start scrolling down, you can see that image is fading in as well as moving up and down, which I think this is a much better effect than just the motion, and I really do prefer just the subtlety of the opacity changing. So with just this simple little bit of CSS, we've actually created a pretty cool fade in effect that we can use on any element on our website by just adding this OWD fade in class. Now, before we wrap this tutorial up, I do wanna talk about the accessibility of this. Anytime you start talking about motion or animation, it's important to consider the accessibility. Somebody that gets motion sickness might not enjoy this page with these images moving around and changing their opacity. One easy way to fix this is to write a media query for prefers reduced motion. So to do that, we're gonna type an at symbol at the very top of our declaration, and we're gonna type the word media. Next, inside parentheses, we're gonna type in prefers hyphen reduced hyphen motion colon no hyphen preference. Now, essentially what this is saying is only do these things if the person hasn't set their preference to reduce motion. Now to wrap all the CSS we wrote inside of this media query, we're just gonna open and close our curly brackets and we'll just get this close one and move it all the way to the bottom of our CSS. Now what we've done is wrap all the CSS we wrote inside this media query for prefers reduced motion. Let me show you exactly what that does on the front end. Hey, I hate to interrupt this video, but I wanted to tell you about a brand new, exclusive, and completely free resource I put together here for my Generate Loving friends on YouTube. It's called the Six Essential Tweaks to a Perfect Generate website, and it's the six tweaks that I think are most important to get the best results out of Generate Press and Generate Blocks. If you use the link down in the video description below or go to the adminbar.com forward slash generate, I'll give you instant access to all the code, insight to what I'm using it for, and a full video walkthrough. All right, now let's jump back into the video. Now I haven't set my prefers reduce motion to reduce the motion, so you can see the actual animation is happening just fine on my end. But we can actually use the inspector tool to emulate what would happen for somebody who set that prefers reduce motion. Here, I'm gonna go into the inspector and type in Command-Shift-P, and we can start typing in prefers, and we'll find 
prefers reduced motion reduce. Now this is an accessibility setting in people's operating systems. So some people that get motion sick might've already set this inside of their operating system. So now we can see what will happen if they have that set. With that set, we can start scrolling down our page here and we can see our images are no longer animating. They're just behaving the exact way they did before we wrote any of these animations. This is exactly what we want. Now somebody who prefers not to have motion won't have the motion. And for people who haven't set that setting, they'll get the full animated version that we wrote all the CSS for. This just helps make your website a little bit more accessible. And it's a really easy declaration to add to your CSS to go that extra mile. I've left a link down in the video description below to Kevin's video. I would highly encourage you to go check that out so you can really do a deep dive into how all these things work. We really only scratched the surface here and I think you'd be blown away at all the different kinds of things you can do with these scroll-based CSS only animations. Now, if you learned something in this video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure to catch the next one, then hit subscribe and we'll see you next week.